Would you like to make more sales? Would you like to make more money? Would you like people to buy from you now? In today's training, I'm going to show you how to win sales now. This topic cannot wait till tomorrow. If you learn it tomorrow, you've already lost your customer today. What you need to remember is that buyers are impatient. They have a need for speed. And when they want something, they want it now. In this training, you are going to learn how to sell to the four disc styles. You're going to discover how to make the right impact when you meet them for the first time. How to identify needs accurately. The best way to present solutions. Ideas to gain commitment and best practices for after sales service. Now, I know that these ideas work because I have used them in my business to acquire more than 9,500 clients globally, celebrities, multi-million dollar businesses, and also billion dollar businesses. And I know that if you just do what successful people do, you too will get the same results. This system that I'll be sharing with you today is being implemented across more than 100,000 companies around the world. Over the past 35 years, we have had more than 30 million people take our psychological assessments, which means we know how humans think and feel. And when you follow this proven system, you will win sales now. So just do what successful people do and you'll get the same results. So let's begin. How do you sell to the D style? When you're meeting the D style for the first time and you're making your initial contact, it's very important that you provide information around overall performance and results. Remember, the D style is performance and results oriented. When meeting the D style, be formal, be businesslike, and get right to the point. The D style doesn't want to hear your sales pitch. They just want to know what results you can offer them. Refer to bottom line results, increase efficiency, and save time. If you want to sell effectively to the D style on initial contact, just refer to the bottom line. Don't beat around the bush. Talk to them how they can increase efficiency and save time. This is what they want. Give them what they want. In addition, if interested, they're likely to explore matters with you right away. The D style will be blunt. They'll be direct. They'll be to the point. If they want it, they'll be direct with you. If they don't want it, they'll be direct with you and just appreciate the style. Now, once you've been invited to sell to the D style, here are some ways that you can identify needs. Alternate between asking questions and providing information. Also, make questions practical and logical. Remember, your D style person, they're very practical. They're very logical. So you don't want to overburden them with analytical conversations. They're not interested in academia. They just want results. Only request information which is unavailable elsewhere. What this means is that the D style expects that you've done all of your research in advance. They expect that you've researched their business and the only questions you should be asking are questions that can't be found in the public domain. In addition, ask questions showing you understand their needs clearly. This is very important. You have to understand their needs and only ask specific questions. Don't go general, ask specific. Once you've discovered their needs, it's now time to present solutions. When presenting solutions to the D style, if possible, write it out before you present. What they want is bullet points. Bang, bang, bang. Focus on the bottom line results. And so say to them things like, which means. Because of this new technology, you can reduce your power savings by 10%, which means you'll have more cash flow. So always use which means benefit statements. Do the analysis and lay it out for them to approve or disagree. Never come to the D style with a ready-made decision. Don't make decisions for them. Allow them to make the decisions. But you're going to do all the analysis for them and let them approve or disapprove. 
You also want to cut out intermediate steps when you make your presentation. They just want to see the big picture. Just give them the bullet points. They don't need all the details. They'll figure that out themselves. In addition, when selling to the D style, you've got to gain commitment. And this is calling for action. What you want to do is you want to come right out and ask whether they're interested. Just ask them, John, is this of interest to you or not? Again, don't beat around the bush. Help them see the balance between quality, results and cost. Show them that sometimes by paying a little bit higher price, you can get much better quality, which means in the long run, there'll be less repairs or maintenance. They'll appreciate that. In addition, provide options with evidence and leave the final decision to them. They don't care so much for your opinion. Just give them options. This is option one. This is option two. This is option three. What works best for you? If you say to them, these are the options and number two is best for you, you'll lose your credibility immediately. Also be mindful. They are especially wary if they question your competence. What we say in professional speaking is that you have to know 100 words for every one word that comes out of your mouth. If you walk in there and they if they sniff that you're an amateur, they'll cut you down immediately. So sometimes what you might have to do is you might have to do a turnover and turn over the sale to somebody more skilled in this area than you. In addition, you've got to service the sale after. So how do you perform great after sales service with the D-Style? Don't rely on past sales to ensure future purchases. You might think just because you've made one sale to them, they'll remain loyal to you. That is not the case. You've got to constantly sell these people because other people will be selling to them. You also need to find out if they have any complaints or problems with your product. Ask them directly. Do you have any complaints? Is there any problems with our product and service? They'll appreciate you for that because they're bold, they're direct. Also, follow up without taking a lot of their time. Jump on the call. John, this is Daniel, checking in. Do you have any complaints or problems with the product so far? And let them talk. Don't beat around the bush. Don't ask them about family. Just get to the point. If anything is less than what they expect, fix it fast. For these people, they have a need for speed, a very high need for speed. And don't say tomorrow, don't say next week, don't say next month. Just say, I'll do it now. These are some wonderful ideas that you can utilize when selling to the S style. Now, when working with the I style, you've got to remember that the I style is different. So as you sell to the I style, make sure your initial contact is gauged for this person. You want to be telling stories about yourself, especially humorous, humorous or unusual ones. You can, you can tell stories about your past life. You can tell stories about your family business. I told people that I was in porn and I said to them, my mum was in porn, my dad was in porn and even my brother was in porn and we owned a porn broking business. In the eye style, they roar with laughter. They think it's the most hilarious thing, and it always builds a bridge. Also use an upbeat and friendly feeling approach. These people are upbeat. They stand on their toes. They're happy. They go lucky. And make sure you bring that friendly approach with them. Also ask questions about them. Prepare for lengthy answers. Their most interesting topic in the world is them and their family and their friends. Ask them questions about who they are. And just listen intently. Nod, smile, lean forward on your seat. In addition, use feeling words instead of thinking words. These people are real feelers, so use a lot of emotional words. How do you feel about this? What's the vibe like? Could you imagine yourself resonating with this? How would others resonate with this? What's the frequency around here? And they'll really appreciate that. When it comes to identifying the I style's needs, we have a different set of criteria to the D, to the S, or to the C style. Here, you want to ask a lot of questions about them. Ask questions that are personal and about their dreams, their goals, and their aspirations. You also want to work your exploratory questions in with the social questions. So what we normally say when building rapport, we ask two business-based questions for every personal question. With the I style, you might want to flip that around and ask two personal questions for every one business-based question.
In addition, you want to demonstrate how your product or service helps reach their goals. So you want to say to them, I love that goal, and this is how this product or service can help you get there faster, easier. It's a better way, less waste, and it'll serve you better. In addition, after your first visit, you may want to meet for a meal or a coffee as a follow-up. This is a great icebreaker. You've met them and then invite them out for coffee. Hey, I loved our session today. So nice to meet you. I would really like to take you for coffee and get to know you personally. I'll appreciate that because they're looking for that friendship factor. When selling to the iStyle, you want to present solutions in this manner. You want to stress aspects like status, recognition and excitement. So these people love brands. They love people identifying with them. They want to be seen. They want to stand like a giant amongst the crowd. Also show them in the excitement of it. In addition, show your product will increase interactivity and excitement. They are interactive people. They want to talk. They're the life of the party. They're super excited. Show them how it serves those needs. In addition, when presenting your solutions, try to isolate them from distractions so you have their full attention. They may show up to the meeting with a friend, a colleague. They may talk about other topics instead of what you're talking about. Make sure you isolate them from the distractions and bring them back to the topic. Also remind them of who else has used it as well. They love testimonials. They love seeing photos of you with other people. Tell them the guy across the street, the lady around the corner is using this already. If you have any celebrity status working with celebrities or big businesses, point it out, show them the logos. Now, to gain commitment with the eye style, they tend to be impulsive. And what they want is they want to make a decision now and ensure that their commitment is realistic. These people do overpromise. Draw up a summary of the order in advance and go over it with them. What happens here, they'll agree verbally, but if you don't write it up, they'll forget what they agreed to later on. In addition, mention that you appreciate their show of faith in you. They really like this. You'll say, John, thank you. I really appreciate the faith that you're showing in me. Not my company, but in me. Thank you so much. In addition, sign and hand over all the paperwork in person. After sales service includes understanding they may suffer buyer's remorse. When I was in real estate, the I style always suffered buyer's remorse. They'd get in there, they'd get enthusiastic. They would over overbid at auctions. They would overpromise when they were putting an offer in. And then they found out later on they couldn't get the full finance. And then they suffer buyer's remorse. They may make a decision in the heat of the moment, but then they go home and somebody bursts their bubble and they lose their enthusiasm. Also, provide ongoing reminders that they've made the right purchase. Remember the friendship factors here. Call them on a personal note. Call them after hours and let them know you've made a great decision. Also, reinforce their decision by giving plenty of service and attention. These people just don't want a one-time date. They don't want a one-night stand. They want to have an ongoing relationship. So make sure you show them attention. Don't just show up and sell and disappear. Show up, serve, sell, and then keep showing up later on. In addition, help them to get the most out of your product. What you want to do with the iStyle is constantly coach them, guide them, mentor them to show them how to get the best return on their investment. These are some of the most important ideas when selling to the iStyle. Next, you'll also have opportunities to sell to the S-Style. So when making initial contact with the S-Style, be non-threatening. Be pleasant, be friendly, but be very professional. Remember, what the S-Style wants from an interaction is a relationship. And relationships take time. So be non-threatening. Remember, they tend not to show emotion. Also, build trust. Build credibility. Build friendship at a slow, informal pace. In addition, if they don't like what they buy, regardless of quality, you've got to talk to them. If they don't like you, they won't buy you. So you've got to make sure that they really like you, regardless of what you're offering. In addition, show a sincere interest in them and others, because other people are very important to them. Never talk foully about anybody else. Now, when it comes to selling to the S-Style, you'll also identify their needs. 
And here are four of the best ways to do that. Be warm and ask gentle, open questions. Don't get into the specifics too quick. Stay open, stay general. Also show tact and sincerity in probing around their needs. Remember, they tend to be a closed book. So you want to do this tactfully and probe gently. Sometimes they say what they think you want to hear. These people don't like to rock the boat. So they may just agree to disagree. You don't want that. However, if they do, keep probing, keep asking questions. And patiently ask a lot of questions and wait for the answer. And sometimes this means asking more than once. I recently sold a $10,000 coaching program to a high S style. And he sat in silence for about 10 minutes as he thought through the offer. He then retreated back to his office and thought about it for another week. And once he'd made his decision, he came back and told me what he wanted, asked a couple of more questions, and then made the buying decision. So remember, patiently ask a lot of questions. In addition, you'll need to present solutions to the S style. What you will want to do is to show how your service will integrate or support existing solutions. Remember, they change slowly. They can be stubborn. And so you want to show how your service will integrate with or support existing solutions. Too much change for this person too soon is overwhelming. In addition, present new ideas, variations of current routines, non-threateningly. And design your message to impart a sense of stability and security. Remember, the S style has a fear of losing stability. So you want to show how we understand and we're supporting your stability and security. Also list specifics, show sequences, and provide a roadmap for implementation. This is really important. They are detail-oriented. They love to know the order and sequence, and a map from where they are today to where they want to be in the future is very important. Don't jump from A to Z. Make sure you go from A to B, B to C, C to D, etc. Now, when gaining commitment from the S-Style, keep in mind that they will like to hear from other people you work with. Introduce them to your team members. Welcome them to the family. Also, answer their concerns about how and what as simply as possible. When they ask a question, expect their question to be well thought through, especially questions about how and what. And make it simple. Really dumb it right down. If you can say it in a page, cut it down to a paragraph. If you can say it in a paragraph, cut it down to a sentence. Also, don't promise anything you can't deliver. The S style, they seldomly make promises. And when they do, they ensure they deliver on them. And they'll expect the same from you. Finally, when gaining commitment, remember they don't like change. So attempt to elicit small agreements along the way. You never jump from A to Z with these people. Never jump from A to C. It is always A to B. Now, when it comes to after-sales service for the S-Style, there's four things to keep in mind. Involve them in the planning for implementation. Make sure it's not you and them. Make sure it's us doing this together. Also provide consistent and predictable follow-up. Schedule in your follow-up. Put it in the diary right now. Also, be available on as-needed basis to support them. You can say something like, Mary, thank you so much for your trust in us. I look forward to this relationship. And I'll be available for you as-needed. All you need to do is drop me a message, write me an email, or pick up the phone, and I'll be there for you as-needed. Finally, impersonal computerized follow-up is not ideal. You want to keep it personal. So when you're communicating with them, pick up the phone. If you have the opportunity and you work in a geographical region, pop in and say hello. Remember, they're thinking about the relationship. If you're thinking about the sale, you're thinking from A to B. They're thinking about the relationship, which considers you doing business, possibly for the rest of your life. So they're great future thinkers. And if you're not thinking out there into the future, as far as them, they may not purchase from you. Here's an example. I was selling a program in Sydney and the buyer asked me, Daniel, what do you see as our next step together? Now, I wanted to be honest with the person and I said to them, 
I haven't thought that far. And they looked at me and they said, so you want to sell me this program, but you don't have a next step. Now, I realized all of a sudden I was working with a S-style buyer and I hadn't thought enough down the track. Now, because of my integrity and my honesty, I said, no, I hadn't thought about it. They did let me off the hook, but I made sure I never made that mistake with the S-style ever again. You've always got to think through the relationship. Where's the next step? Where's the next step? Because they're thinking for life. If you're thinking just for the day, then you may lose the sale. So these are some of the most important ideas discovered on selling to the S style. Now, moving on to the C style. We have to be able to sell to all styles, including the C style. When making initial contact with the C style, you want to use thinking, not feeling language. Don't discuss feelings. Don't ask them how they feel. Use logic with these people. Also, tell them briefly what you'll cover so they know what to expect. We call this telegraphing. In today's session, we're going to learn A, B, and C. I'm going to be talking to you about A, B, and C. And they will then know what to expect. Don't give them D, don't give them E, just give them A, B, and C. In addition, they will not care as much about the social aspect. They don't care about your friendship. They don't care about your relationship. They don't care about your social status or engaging them in your social dues. So don't bring it up because it will create overwhelm in them and it's not what they're looking for. In addition, they will be naturally suspicious of people who oversell. So don't overpromise. Don't oversell. Don't tell them that they could get 50% improvements when 25% is the reality. They'll appreciate you when you tell them the truth and the reality. If you start to oversell it, they will become ultra suspicious of you and they will back away. Now, when it comes to identifying the needs of the C style, they won't typically volunteer their needs easily. Remember, they're a closed book and you'll have to probe. They like to question, uh, answer questions that reveal their knowledge and expertise. So you could ask questions based on your knowledge, Joanne. What would you be doing based on your expertise? How do you see this? And they really like that. In addition, when it comes to identifying needs, if you don't know the answer to something, don't fake it. They will ask great questions. They will ask questions about your product and service that you have never thought of, that no other customer has ever asked you, and that nobody's ever trained you for in your business. So if you don't know the answer, say, let me come back to that and don't fake it. In addition, phrase your questions to help them give you the information you need. So you always want to pre-frame all of your questions to make sure that you get the information you need. When it comes to presenting your solutions, you want to describe the process that you plan to follow. And so what you'll do is you'll say, Mark, in today's session, I'd like to cover one, two, and three. I'll then offer a summary and then we'll open it up for questions and exploration. They'll appreciate that. Emphasize logic, accuracy, value, quality, and reliability. This is what they want. Give them what they want. Also, elicit feedback for enhancements from them. Ask them, what is your opinion? What are your thoughts here? What are the pitfalls here? What are the shortfalls? What are the weaknesses that you see? Let them say it. By identifying it doesn't mean that they won't buy, just let them use their knowledge and show their expertise. Fourthly, provide logical, reliable proof of your quality, track record and value. If you've been featured in GQ magazine, show them. If you've been featured on Channel 10, show them. If you have research that can back this up, show them, give it to them because they will love it and it will help them buy from you. After presenting, you then need to ask and call for action. Here are four of the best ways to call for action with the C style. Firstly, give them enough time and data to analyze their options. If you push to close too fast, you will lose the sale. Also, verify your credentials, preferably in writing. If it's in black and white, they believe it. If it's spoken, they don't believe it. Also, suggest questions they may want to ask your, com your competitors. You could say something like this, Peter, when I'm speaking to people like you in businesses like this, 
they often ask these questions. And I know that you'll be speaking to me and my company, and I also expect that you'll be looking at the services of our competitors. Here are some great questions that you could ask our competitors and other service providers. That transparency for them, they love it. Finally, point out obvious shortfalls. Honesty will enhance credibility. If you have a shortfall in your product and service, be honest about it. Point it out to them. And what will happen is your credibility will go up. After gaining commitment, you then have to focus on after sales service. What you'd want to do here with the C-Style is set a specific timetable for when and how you'll measure success. Also, continue providing your reliability, quality and value after the sale. Remember, the most important part of the sale is what you do next. It's not your presentation, it's what you do afterwards. Also, make yourself available for follow-up and continuous improvement. Elicit feedback, ask them for their opinions, ask them what they'd like to see improved. And finally, ask their opinion on how you can improve. These people will give you really good feedback. And your job is to elicit and create a forum where they can share feedback. And if you do that, what you'll get is you'll get a beautiful relationship with your client. So these are some of the most important ideas that have been discovered in the field of selling. And what I encourage you to do right now is to take these ideas. Take these ideas and implement them. As you look at each buyer that walks through the door or picks up the phone or writes to you, adapt and re- adjust and respond your style to suit them. Today's selling is very different from yesterday's selling. Every buyer needs a customized approach. Remember, there's four buying styles. And if you can approach these four styles independently and differently, then what will happen is they'll have a wonderful experience with you. When they have a wonderful experience with you, your level of trust your perception increases and they will want to do business with you. So I hope you've enjoyed these ideas and I know that when you apply them, just like other many successful people have around the world, you too will get the same result. What's the result? You'll win sales now. Have a wonderful day.